Okay, hey everyone, I wanted to uh, give a shout out to my man Max over at Game Server app here. Uh, he runs a really cool uh, hosting service for ARC servers. And uh, I came to there from, I first went to Nitrido and then I went to Shockbite. And, uh, you know, someone suggested to me, hey, check out this game server app. It's completely not on even the same level. It's just better. So I said, okay. And I looked at it, and I'm like, wow, yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, and I ended up proceeding. And uh, it is definitely not a traditional host. Uh, service. It's run by uh, one guy. His name is Max on Discord, anyhow. I don't... And uh, he is very proactive in doing bug fixes, implementing features, helping people day in and day out on the Discord. Uh, he's got decent rates, and uh, his website offers a lot of power and flexibility for running your server. Uh, one of the things that Game Server app has is a mod integration that you can use to run a store from in-game uh, for people to buy things. Now, in this store uh, what you could do is you can set up a vote reward system where they have to vote for you on uh, one of those server voting sites and then you can get tokens that way. Uh, other ways you can get tokens are, and this is what I do because I don't really uh, have enough people to even bother worrying about the voting thing, um, but you can also add uh, in-game gems that are worth tokens that you consume these and it adds to your token account so right now for example my account has 35 tokens applied to it and I got those through drops which I will talk about a little bit later uh, with that said uh, another way you can get tokens if you so choose is you can actually have subscriptions where your users you know send you five dollars a month or whatever you want to do and then that gives them supporter tiers where they can either monthly have a subscription or a one-time thing where you buy tokens now I personally would never do that I'm not a pay-to-win kind of person but you could certainly do this in a way that's not pay-to-win as well I, I just I don't care. I just wanted to have fun with it, so I put some of those gem drop gems in my drops. Um, but anyhow, what you do is, if you wanted to start making a store in game, uh, there's two different ways to go about that. The first way is to use a terminal. And I happen to have a terminal spawned right at my base here for this demonstration. So the first thing you have to do is what we're we're going to tell uh, GSA that uh, you're about to do a tribute upload. So if you find your character on GSA. What you have to do is you have to say empty tribute first on the appropriate server that you're doing it from. And that'll just ensure there's nothing in queue and nothing from nothing funny that's gonna get added to this on you that you didn't want. Okay, so the way this works, this is like transferring between servers almost. So there's you're gonna utilize the tributes in order to define the contents. of the chop pack that you're going to make. So I have made some Federation armor 
I'm going to just drag these items in here. So here's a Federation suit from Genesis 2, for example. And I'm also going to give him a Soul Trapped Strider. Okay. So I have these in the tribute. And what the hell, I'll throw some hide in there and some bullets. Because why not? Alright, so now I have some items that I want to say, okay, this is what I want a player to be able to purchase in this screen. So the next thing we do is we go back to GSA. And we'll say download tribute. And in which storage box do you want to save the tribute data? Uh, I already have a box made, and I'm going to call it, I call it box 1. And save as a name that describes the content. We'll say Gen 2 Starter Stuff. So right now it just downloaded all that information from that tribute. At this point, these items are still here in this box. And they essentially become duplicates at that point. So you can just take them back out. You still have them. And now anyone who takes, buys that box will essentially have a duplicate of all the items that you bought there. Uh, which we could talk about not wanting dupe dinos a little bit later. From there, what you want to do is you want to go to shop packs. And we're going to add a shop pack. And we'll call this again the Genesis 2 starter stuff. And it's going to be a set of Fed Ration Tech Armor and a Strider, but available on, on the island instead. So what you have to do now is you first have to choose an image for the end game. Well, there's there's a website image and then there's the end game image. So a website I'm just going to throw a picture on there because you have to have one. And then it says here you can select an end game image after saving the new shop pack. So we'll get to that in a moment. So now. I will choose from the in game uploads I did, and the one I did was the Gen 2 starter stuff. And I'm going to say choose from in game uploads. And then after that, I want it to be available on the Mootslandia cluster. It's for ARC. The publish date for this pack is going to be immediately, so I'll leave the date the same. And for the price, I'm going to say it costs one token. And you can only buy it once. And we're going to save. After you've created your shop pack, you can then go ahead and apply an end game image to use uh, for them to buy an end game. Uh, these are essentially all the little icons from all of the various items in game you can choose from, or one of the gems if you choose. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just pick tech gloves for the sake of having one. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save again. So now two things have happened. I can now purchase that pack that I created which contains the Gen 2 starter stuff, which is what I downloaded from the Tribute. And I can either buy it from the community website in the shop, only deliverable on the Mooselandia cluster. And I can have it delivered to a terminal and just say order now. It'll charge me the token price and deliver it, and it should be there within a few minutes.
Uh, another thing you can do with that, uh, you don't have to buy it through the website at all. You can actually go in game. And if you press the button you defined for your store, which by default I believe is F3. Where is that? Integration mod. I gave shop. I had my mine was set to F3 on default. I did go in and add a title boost mark. But that is the default F3. So if you're in game, you can just press F3 and it pulls the shop up. And I'm going to say, well, let's look at it in store. Okay, so here's the, the icon I defined. Here's a description. Here's the price. I can buy it once per year. I have 35 tokens. Oops. I guess you can click that if you wanted to buy more tokens, but we're not going to do that. And I say buy it. Thank you for your order. Your order will be delivered shortly. So at this point, we're just going to wait a couple moments, and it will tell us when it's been delivered. Ah, your Gen 2 stuff is ready for pickup at the nearest supply plate on the list or terminal. So let's go ahead and open that. And Arc Data. And here it is. Here's all the items that I ordered, and it cost me one token. And now I have essentially purchased my own box. And like I said, it is essentially duplicating whatever you put in there. So if you really only want one dino, for example, you'll have to destroy the original. Uh, it doesn't have to be items. I believe it can be creatures too. But on my server, we use dino storage too, which allows you to trap the dinos. And that's the way that I've chosen to distribute that. Okay, uh, I apologize about the energy if I'm a little different now. I had to take a little break to work out some kinks and some of this I was about to do, but I have it pretty streamlined now. So, in addition to using the terminal to upload boxes, to make a shop pack. There is another way of doing this that is pretty cool. So you can actually do the same thing but you can use Archon commands to send specific things to characters as well. So I was doing some thinking about how I could utilize that in a fun way and uh, one thing I came up with was if you are familiar with the mod Dino Storage 2 um, if you're not, it's a mod that kind of reinvents the cryopod system and adds a lot of features to it. It's very customizable, allows you to enable automation on egg generation or wool or breeding or whatever it is you want to do. Uh, but one of the features that mod has is a script command that you can summon dinos with at specific levels and stats and all that good stuff. So what I did was I went ahead and I said I want to make a mantis to put into my shop. So I added the blueprint path based on the calculator here. By the way this calculator is available on the dino storage mod under mod links and the dino storage version 2 google doc guide so I, I went to that link I went to the tab for dino spawning and I put in the blueprint for a mantis for example and you can actually even just put a question mark uh, from there I, I've defined that it will be tamed it will be a male it will be neutered so they can't be bred uh, it will come pre in a trap, and it's also going to be a mystery. Uh, not exactly a mystery, because I do say what it is, but I call it the Big Dog Mantis, and the description is a randomized mantis. From there, 
uh, I've defined all of the stats to be up to 60 points in a random figure. So the question is random. 60 means that's the maximum. You can do the same with colors and any of these other variables you want to as well. So essentially I took this calculator to make the script command. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to go back to the dashboard here. And I hit Add Shop Pack. And the pack name is going to be Mantis. And it's going to be a description of Random Stat Mantis Turd. I'm going to choose an image for it because it needs one. For the website, I'm just going to give it this sign because I don't care, it's just a demo. So now instead of using the in game uploads and pulling out of the box various uploads, I'm going to instead going to use Archon and I'm going to add a new Archon command. And I'm just going to paste in this script from before. And I'm going to get rid of the admin cheat because we don't need that. And then per the command, you may enter a Steam ID or delivery uh, to a specific person. And that would go right here after the Spawn Dino DS. And I'm going to use Steam ID variable so that it gets set to the correct person. I'm going to go ahead and paste that right there. In addition to that, I would also like a saddle to be delivered. So I went ahead and made this command ahead of time. And this is give item to player. Uh, this particular command needs the character ID instead of the game ID. So it has this variable instead. Here's the blueprint path to the saddle. It's a quantity of one, a quality of one, with no chance of being a blueprint. I go ahead and paste that here too. From there, I'm going to say it can be used on all clusters or arc. It's going to go live today. I'm going to set it to cost five tokens. And I'm going to allow unlimited purchases. And there I'm going to save. Now I'm going to go ahead and add an in game item for the shop. I'm just going to pick Basilisk Head. Uh, you can also define a blueprint path to a different icon if you can't find one you want on this list. And just go ahead and hit save again. So now, if I return to my shop pack screen, you'll see that I offer the Gen 2 starter for one token, and I have the Mantis for five tokens. In game, now I can go in game and I can pull up the shop, and here is the Mantis for sale. And it costs five. Random stamp man is neutered. Manus, I have 68 tokens. It costs five. Go ahead and buy it. And then it just takes a moment to process. It can take anywhere from 20 seconds to probably a minute or two. It's usually pretty quick though. And as you can see, it was delivered. I have my big dog mantis, randomized mantis, and I have a random saddle at a low quality. Let's go ahead and let this mantis out and check him out. So here he is, pretty standard color palette for a mantis. He's level 193. Go ahead and give him his saddle next. And let's look at his stats. So he's got 51 health, that's pretty nice. 32 stamina, 18 food, 10 oxygen, 9 weight, which is abysmal. But he's got good attack at 60, and his speed is 12. So that's a 
would be a breedable mantis, except here he's neutered. Uh, so that's just a quick demo of how you could do a uh, archon to make a cool little purchase. And there's, you know, you can be creative and come up with all kinds of different things you can do with that. As long as you can support a, an archon command or know of a mod that has ability to run a script that is suitable for what you want to do, you can sky's pretty much the limit there. So the other part of this thing now is back to the tokens. So tokens are available through a couple different primary methods. Uh, you can outright buy the tokens. Actually, I'll pull it up this way. You can have it so you can outright buy the tokens. You can figure that through GSA. Uh, I actually don't. I certainly hope nobody buys this. This is all default. I have no intention on ever making it uh, pay to win on my server. But uh, it is a, an option. Another option is there is a voting system for vote rewards that uh, allows you to uh, integrate into some of these voting sites and then once a day you can press F4 it'll open up in game a uh, link to those sites you can vote and that can also provide you with a reward um, with a paid add-on you can also add monthly subscription for tokens as well but what I have chosen to do was take advantage of the fact that there is an in-game item that can just, that can grant you tokens, and I have implemented that into Beacon. Uh, you don't have to use Beacon to do this, but I love Beacon, and it's easy to use for me. And if you've never heard of it, uh, I do have some other videos about it, and I'm going to continue to make some new ones as well. So in Beacon. The uh, primary purpose of Beacon is to modify drop contents. And what I have done was I have added the in game token items to Beacon so that I can put them into these drops. Uh, Max will eventually add the GSA integration mod to the selection list so you wouldn't even have to add those blueprint paths but I have gone ahead and just did it manually because it's not that hard to do. You just put the blueprint path of the item and a description and whether or not it's blueprintable and then you save and then it's available to insert, insert into various traps so I put them into loot some some loot drops and then I also put them into some dinos so a gigo might give you a 10 token gem and a allosaurus might give you a 5 for example so with those um, they're very straightforward to use it's just a simple item Let me find out on Google. Uh, if you search for GSA token gem, you can actually pull up the list very easily of how to access these gems. And there's also some basic information about how they work. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and archon myself a 25 gen token. By first, I will need to get my player ID out. My character ID, rather. There's my character ID. So I'm going to take this command and I'm going to update it to include my specific ID number. I'm going to go ahead and execute this over Archon. 
which should then give me the 25 token gem. So you can see what that looks like. So here's the 25 token gem added to uh, me through Archon. But again, I have these set to come out of drops. And uh, as you can see, I simply started with 63 tokens. And simply using this item will increase that by 25 tokens. So it's just a matter of a little creativity and what you think you want to do with it. But obviously, at least in my opinion, obviously, it's a pretty powerful feature that has a lot of flexibility and you can do a lot of cool stuff with. And uh, I, I just hope that maybe someone finds some interest in this video and it helps someone out in getting started in it because it took me a little time to figure it out. And uh, after talking it over with Max, uh, after him seeing a different video of mine, he had asked me if I would make any videos for him. And I said, yeah, you know what, I'd like to make a video on this topic because uh, I think it's cool and it's a little tricky if you're not really used to how this kind of stuff works. So uh, anyhow, thank you for watching and take care.